What's up, guys? This is Howie Mandel, and you just heard. What's up, everybody? Welcome into another episode Are, of You this Heard. This is the one that you're going to use in the actual podcast. <laughs> Howie Mandel, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're laughing on the outside, but you are so annoyed on the inside. Oh, no. Let's go. Let's do it. I like it. This I'm the worst. I'm the most annoying no. guy in the world. I got to no. say thank you for having me on. Um, do I get a free mafia uh, membership for just being part of this? I think you do. I think this Let's is... Jump and break a table? Sure. If that's what you want to do. No, because I, from Toronto, I, my uh, father-in-law was in the furniture business and I used to, uh, I used to come down over the border and sell uh, tables to the <laughs> <hell haters. laughs> Cause they go through a lot of them. They go through a lot of them. Howie, you are from Toronto. What do you know yeah. about the bills? When did you start following this team? We don't have a team in Toronto. So uh -huh. I started following this team when this team, when does this team start? Was it like 60? 1960. 1960. 60, right? Yeah. I was, I'm like, I was already, I'm older than your team. So uh, yeah, I, I, I remember it like right from the beginning. It was always on TV. I, Buffalo was always on TV. I, I, uh, watched, I watched Eyewitness News on from Canada and are you in Buffalo? Yep, we're in Buffalo right now. Yeah, so there was always like, there was always great music when there was a fire in Tonawanda. Oh my <laughs> gosh. And I and I grew up watching Rocket Ship 7 and Ir Irv Weinstein. You're too young to know any of these names. I'm but not a Buffalo Buff native, so those names are going over my head, but I know people watching this will know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, so I watched Eyewitness News. And Eyewitness News was like, the news was scored. And it, it was the only teams. Uh, we had teams. We, but at that time, we didn't have baseball. We just had the Leafs. You had the Sabres. Mm -hmm. well, I don't even think that, uh, uh, but, uh, and football, American football, it was like an hour and a half away. You know, it was the only, it was the closest team. I'm, I'm a guy who, uh, to be totally honest with you, I'm a guy who, um, I'm, um, I'm a fan of wherever I live. Just because mm -hmm. I like to, it's kind of fun to root for the home team. So for years and years, my home team was the Bills because I lived in Toronto and we didn't, and we didn't have a team. And now, you know, I'm a kind of a Rams fan because I live here and it's kind of fun to go. It's like going to your school and rooting for your school. I like that. You know? So when you were living in Toronto... Did you get to cheer for the Bills during some of their good years? What years were you in Toronto and cheering for this team? Oh, during their good years. Good. You went to the Super Bowl four times, didn't you? you yes. Didn't win. Yeah. Those were exciting. Yeah. Almost. Oh, and disappointing. Almost. And disappointing. I'm, 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 really, I'm really tugging on not good. I'm not making any. I think I was just thrown out of the mafia. I'm no. not making any fans no, of the it, show. You know. People will, will share the feelings that you have because people have been fans of this team for so long. They remember the hard times. They remember the good times. And they are up on this team this season. The last several years, we've got a quarterback in Josh Allen who does superstar things. Do yeah. you like following him? Yeah. And, and not only that, I also love, you know, for me as a Canadian I loved watching the Buffalo Bills because uh, one of the few teams that would play in the, I love watching football in the snow. Something about it, right? There is. And then, you know, you just, and then sliding through the snow is just so, it just seems so cool. It really does. I, was, I, I don't know if you know, like uh, Canada, we have our own uh, league up in Canada called the, mm -hmm. CFL. the CFL. And when I was growing up, I was just, I was mesmerized by the NFL because we had, uh, I think when I was there, I think there was only eight teams. And out of eight teams, there was only uh, seven names. Do you know that? And w w two of the teams have the same name. Never happened in the N NFL. There's no I other bill. I know that. The Rough Riders. It the was Rough the Ottawa Riders. Rough Riders and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Riders. That's awesome. Yeah. So Nobody the else wanted to be a bill. <laughs> no, no bills teams in Canada? Buffalo. Why did they come up with Buffalo? Like, well, how did they, a lot of other, all the other NFL teams have the, uh, the, uh, 
like the animal is the name of the team, right? Like the mm -hmm. eagles, mm -hmm. right? But but then you the animal is the name of the town. I know. And then the team is just Bill. My wife keeps trying to call me. Call my wife and see what she wants. My wife, I told my wife I'm going to be on a uh, on the Buffalo Bill podcast. She's very excited. As somebody who's in Canada, uh, grew up in Canada, I know you're not in Canada currently, but how much do Canadians, specifically Toronto area, do you feel like they follow the NFL? Do you feel like there's a lot of NFL fans in that area? Yeah, the uh, the Bills come in, uh, have the Bills not come and play. They play up in Toronto now. They didn't when I was uh, younger and, and lived there, but they've played in our stadium. They've come up and played in our stadium. I I, I think that uh, we uh, romanticize about having an NFL team. And I don't know if there was ever talk. Was there ever talk about uh, Canada buying the Bills when uh, before? Uh, is it Terry and his wife? Is it, uh, Terry and Kim? Who, yeah, the who bought the they team. bought it. The first guy passed. And I think Canada was, I, I don't know. I don't know if they were talking about it, but I don't understand why in Toronto, you know, we have major league baseball, we have the NBA, we have the NHL, and um, we don't have an NFL team, you know? So I, I think, and my, my brother who still lives in Toronto goes down to the stadium and watches, you know, Bill's games. And then I think that they come up and they've played in our stadium. So yeah, yeah we fantasize and, and the uh, aside, well, Canada, you know, the, the, our, our pastime in Canada is hockey mm -hmm. and that's the big sport, but second to hockey, I, I think that uh, football probably gets bigger ratings than any other sport. Yeah. Do you think an NFL team in Canada would, would do well? In a in in Toronto, I think it would. Yeah. Toronto in in Toronto, it would. I mean, I think that half that. What, what does your stadium hold? Like sixty thousand people. I, I I think there a good portion of those people come from Southern Ontario, which mm -hmm. for those that are listening is is the province right up butted up against uh, yeah. Buffalo. So uh, I I would imagine. I don't know if you know. There are a lot of Canadians in your crowd. I would imagine every home game that happens. Shout, eh? You hear about, you know, there's the games in Germany, there's the games in London, there's the games in Mexico. Do you think there needs to be a game in Toronto every single year? Yeah, I think it would be nice. I, I'm uh, um, kind of a, a proponent of having a, uh, a football team uh, outside of the, well, we do have the Toronto Argonauts, which True. is a CFL. You know, when I was a kid, I used to go to the Argo games. Uh, the the um, quarterback, you're probably too young to know these names, but our quarterback for the Argonauts was Joe Theismann. Mm. And a lineman that was on the Argonauts was Lou Frigno. Do you know who he is? Nope, that name is beyond. So on the, original, on the original TV show, The Hulk, he played the Hulk and he was, and he's also uh, uh, deaf. So I don't know how he got along in the huddles, but, but uh, they were, they were on the Ar Argonauts, the Toronto Argonauts when I mm -hmm. used to go to games, but I always fantasized even at going to those games uh, that this, this needs to be the NFL. You know, the, the rules are a little bit different. I'm, I'm a big fan of the NFL. I'm a huge fan of the NFL. I'm not a fan of, uh, and this is probably, that but I don't, I'm, don't really watch that much college football that's okay as much is it okay yeah it is yeah. Okay. why are you such a big fan of the NFL what is it about the game that you love so much you know for me as a sport it's kind of like it's slow enough and big enough to actually watch the strategy okay you know you can actually even if you don't know a lot about football you can kind of see what they're doing you know you can see what the plan was and how the plan either plays out or it's getting quashed in the moment but you can see what the what the plan is whereas you know I grew up on hockey and I'm not I'm not that good at it and I'm not that good a skater it's really fast and I don't know that you know everything's just sliding around is it or even in soccer or, and I know there is strategy in basketball, but it's too fast for me to see how mm -hmm. they decided to play it. But the fact that you can stop and kind of make a plan 
or see the setup. I just love that the kind of intricacy of, you know, offensive and defensive kind of plays and kind of switching up in the moment and seeing how the game is going or pre-planning how you're going to, whatever your plan of attack is going to be based on what they're doing, who's in, who's out, where you're playing, right. how you're playing, you know, changing up at halftime. So even as a, an idiot, I can sit and not only watch the game and root for a, a team and want somebody to win, but I can go, oh my God, what a great move, what a great plan. Or they, you know, they got faked out or look at the strategy, Yeah, you know, and, and that's always fun to do, really? you know, and everybody, every one of us that watches football becomes the coach, you know, screaming at the TV, <laughs> you know, run yeah. the clock down, time out, you know, yep. Howie behind you, you got a sign that says Howie Mandel does stuff and you have done so many things throughout your career as an actor, as a television personality, as a comedian, as a producer. What are you up to currently? I'm, oh, there. I'm up to I do a podcast with my daughter and Amazing. I also do one with Harlan Williams called uh, When a Stranger Calls. Um, I'm, I'm really close to you right now. I'm doing. Uh, when I'm not doing AGT right now in November, I'm doing CGT, which is Canada's Got Talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm doing um, producing anything and touring. I Stand up comedy is my favorite thing. And I do that. And that's where I don't have to have uh, any um, editing. Um, it's kind of where I can have fun and be free. And everything I've ever done in my career has been based out of the fact that I do stand up. And if you want to see where I am, go to HowieMandel.com and have my, you'll see my dates and my uh, appearances. But that's my favorite thing. That's my easiest thing. That's mm -hmm. my most fun thing to do is just everything I was ever punished for, expelled for, gotten in trouble for is what I get paid for on the stage as a stand up. Why does stand up come so easy to you? It doesn't come easy as much as it it's just my natural uh kind of uh I don't find it easy. I find it really hard, but I like that that hard work. You know, I I look at it like it's uh my my analogy is like a roller coaster. I love thrill rides. You know, I still love roller coasters. And the higher it is, the scarier it is, the closer you think you're coming to death, the better it is. And you want to get on again. You wouldn't get on a roller coaster again if it was just boring and breezy and it would just be boring. So when somebody says, ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mandel, um, from that moment on, I don't know how it's going to go, how I'm going to be perceived, how it's going to be received, if you're going to relate, if I'm going to get myself in trouble, if, you know, and, and that's kind of exciting and terrifying and fun and uh, dangerous, you know, whereas if I show up on TV, you know, uh, on, on, and I love it, family television, you know, of AGT or deal or no deal or whatever else I've done. Uh, or I love sitting, but you know, I pre-plan what I'm going to do with my daughter, you know, on Howie Mandel does stuff. We have great guests or having fun with another comic like Harlan Williams. When a stranger calls, there is no rule. There is no marks to hit. There is no commercials to throw to. There is no, there is nothing in stand-up mm -hmm. comedy that is in my mind is off limits. If it's stand-up comedy. When it comes to America's Got Talent, what has been the best part of being involved with a show that, that, that's that huge and has been on for so long? Well, having a job that long is good. Um, the, the best part of it, I mean, it sounds corny, but it's, I, I really truly believe it and feel it. When somebody has a hope and a dream and they haven't had an opportunity, then they walk out on the stage in front of me. And in that moment, you can feel like they just hit it out of the park. And you know that their life is never going to be the same again. And all their dreams are going to come true. Just to bear witness to that and to be in the same room as that, my, my heart, you know, it's it it can make you emotional, it can make you hit a golden buzzer. That That's just something that you'll I will never get used to. Do you have a an act that's in your mind as, as one of the best things you've seen on that show, whether it be America's version or Canada's version? 
Yeah, uh, The Unbeatable. The Unbeatable is this troupe of about 30 kids from India, you know, who uh, virtually were, a lot of them were homeless. And they do, you talk about athletics, these kids will toss themselves in the air and do the most dangerous things and land on a bamboo pole, two stories wow. in the air and being flipped. They, they, they were my golden buzzer. They won one year. I've just never seen anything more dangerous, more exciting, more thrilling and more life-changing for them than any one thing I've seen in my 16 years on America's Got Talent. When you look at your career on a piece of paper and you look at all the things you've been involved with when it comes to TV, when it comes to comedy, when it comes to being an actor or producer, you have done so many different things. How did some of that lead to an opportunity like America's Got Talent or Deal or No Deal? Well, my, you know, I talk about this ad nauseum, but it's true. I, I say yes to everything. And you don't know what every everything you do is an opportunity, whether those opportunities lead to something else. You never know, you know, uh, like I said yes to this because uh, in growing up, I watched the Buffalo Bills. Who knows? I may be doing interpretive dance at the next Bills halftime show. So you don't you. Yeah, you can only <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, I went up on a dare in Toronto in 1978 as a dare to do stand-up comedy. It's nothing I was pursuing. I did it, and they asked me to come back the next night. And then people saw me. I was on a trip in L.A., and they I did the same thing at the comedy store, and I got a TV show. And from that, I got another TV show. And then I was a stand-up. And then stand-ups get uh, opportunity to do sitcoms. I went and met with a company that does sitcoms. And they said, can you act? They had me read a, a piece of a script. And they said, oh, no, that's very good. We have a job for you. And they put me on a show called Saint Elsewhere, which is a, was a dramatic show for six years. That's where Denzel Washington came out of, whose son was a, an NFL player for a little while. Wow. Uh, yeah. But but uh, anyway, uh, and then, you know, after that, I didn't want to do a game show, but I did. I was never pursuing a game show. I did Saturday morning cartoons, Bobby. I did voiceover just because I did uh, the voices in my stand-up act. I ended up doing Gremlins. I got to work with Jim Henson. I got Saturday morning, Bobby's World. I just, I, I don't know where success is going to come from, but it never comes from no. You know, my, my philosophy is if you say no, that's N-O, which are the first two letters in the word nothing. Nothing comes from no. And especially when you watch football and you see, you know, including the sidelines, maybe 40 people on the field, you know, and players, you go, every kid that you can imagine has played football. Look at the, the, the they went for it. They said yes and went for it. And look at them. They, they got their dreams are coming true. They're playing in the big leagues. And I've been really lucky. I, th I think more than lucky. I just I do everything. Deal or No Deal is a show that a lot of Americans watched. I remember watching it from home as a kid with my family. You know, after you finish your homework, after you eat dinner, let's watch some Deal or No Deal. What was the craziest thing that you experienced on that show? Oh, every episode, uh, somebody thinking that there's an actual skill involved. And uh, when you introduce somebody who has uh, never had health insurance, doesn't own a home, is out of work and has three kids and they're a single mother. And I say, the banker just offered you $20,000. Mm -hmm. And they adamantly go, no deal. I go, you know, I don't gamble. And uh, so it's just, it, it, it always uh, amazed me. Humanity amazes me mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that's a given. The $20,000 is a given the chance of having a million is a chance. And I, I, I you know, I feel like I'm just uh, kind of negating what I just said, but I don't take chances as much as it's right there. And I would have said yes to the $20,000. But so the hardest part of that job was not to throttle somebody and go, take the money. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, we've got one last question for you. Are you going to make it out to any Bills games this year? I, I would love to. I would love to inv invite me to a Bills game. I would. Well, we love would love to, to invite you. 
I, I would I would love to. I you know my schedule is crazy, but any right. opportunity I have to go to an NFL game and to be at a Bills game, I would I would love it. So if you know that I'm at, uh, I have to look at the schedule and know when I'm in in, in the vicinity or you're in the vicinity yeah. of of me, I, that would be my first choice to just sit there and be witness to. Uh, well, at least your quarterback is pretty amazing. He is pretty amazing. We've got some more home games left on the schedule, so we'll have to uh, figure out if it works with your schedule. But the Bills but are also away game. Yep, the Bills are in LA this year. Oh, so then I'll come out to that. Yeah, Let me that's to that. later Are you at, the, at SoFi? Is it going to be at SoFi? I personally will not, but we have a ton of our our crew who travels for those games. I'll definitely be here, but but if not, uh, when I'm in Toronto, I'm in Toronto doing, I know it's November now, but I'm in Toronto doing um, uh, Canada's Got Talent in Niagara Falls. Oh, so perfect. We're, we're pretty close. So if there's a game when I'm there and I'm not shooting and we're shooting at night, I'd love to cross the border into... Uh, We've got a few home games in November, and then the Bills play at the LA Rams December 8th beginning of december yeah so, so. five stadium so you guys are getting a new stadium when when is your we new are, stadium going to be we have next season is our last year in the old stadium so it'll be 2026 is when the stadium opens and is it you got a lot of toys planned like amazing things i mean it looks, it looks pretty cool and they they did such a good job of going to places like SoFi and going to the Raiders Stadium and going out to Jerry World and Dallas and then even going to like Tottenham Hotspur Stadium um, across the pond to see how the NFL does it, to see how soccer does it, and to take the best from like all of those places and create something in Buffalo. So I'm really excited. Um, one thing that our owner has said over and over again is like, we're going to build this for Buffalo because, you know, Buffalo is so different than L.A. They don't want the L.A. vibe here. They want they want it to fit the people in Buffalo. So I really appreciate that. Nobody in downtown Buffalo has ever said, you know, this has an L.A. vibe. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And if I they, love Buffalo. I used to yeah. play that. I, I I always played like Klein Hands music, uh, the yes. Melody Tent. Yes, yes. All these other places. I love Buffalo. I'm. I feel like I'm at home when I'm in Buffalo. So thank you for having me, and uh, I wish not. I wish your team nothing but luck, and uh, I look forward to coming to a game in person. And thank you so much, Howie. Promoted, but I want to dive on a table. <laughs> hey i'm sure a lot of people would be recording that and would be excited to see something like that but Think we would the want content to that'll be good for my youtube channel yeah exactly you're being there peaking views from buffalo people <laughs> well howie thank you so much appreciate the time and hope to see you out at a bills game this year i will it's up to you not me